good afternoon. How is everyone doing? If you can hear me, just put it into the chat, let me know. Hey, uh. hey Bob. Hey Pinesh, how are you doing? Super, thanks for that, Bob. Hey Graham. Thank you all for jumping on nice and early. So today we are looking at the fundamental analysis. I'll give it a minute before we'll get started. Hey Robin, how are you doing? Everyone good to go or happy? Fantastic. <clears throat> I'm doing well, Robin. I, but market has been quite treating me quite well today, so I'm very happy. Taking a bit of a break, doing a session here. So, hey, Idris, how are you doing? All right. So let's get started. You can see my screen. You can hear me. I think we're good to go. Hey, Imad. I see a lot of familiar names. All right, so welcome again, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining me. Super happy to be doing this session, sharing my fundamental analysis. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it into the questions, put it into the chat. Let me know at any point. Um, I'll be, I've got two screens here. I'm looking at the questions as well as the um, charts or the presentation that I'm sharing with you. So I'll be happy to address your questions immediately before we get into you know deeper stuff. I am here in Singapore, and actually, if you can, just let me know where are you all joining me from. I'll be happy. I'd love to find out where all of you are joining us from. All right, so we are here with the IC Markets webinar, looking at the advanced fundamental analysis. This is something that I hold true to my heart, very closely to my heart. Let's go. Hey, you all, how you're doing? Very good, fantastic. All right, so as usual, a quick disclaimer before we head into the good stuff. Any information shared in this webinar should not be construed as advice and is presented only as educational material. IC Markets has not considered your objectives, financial situation and needs, and you should consider its appropriateness to your circumstances. So what it means is I will be sharing with you some information about how I look at the fundamental analysis. I will hopefully with time um, look into some charts, look into some possible trade setups as well with some news to be released over the next couple of days. So if you are looking to jump into any trades, please make sure you do your own due diligence, consider your risk, consider your trade size, look at your stop loss, take profit levels. Uh, we cannot be responsible for any of the trades that you get onto. Right, so with that, a few things that we're gonna get through today is not the advanced swing trading strategies. It is the uh, advanced fundamental analysis. We'll be looking at understanding the economic calendar, right? Some news and events to watch out for, followed by how to do these news events affect the markets and then trading the economic news events. What I found is that, you know, a lot of times people or most retail traders get confused or they get scared when they come across a looking at news because it gets a bit too much. They don't know which ones to focus at. So what I'll be doing today is I will be looking at a select few. I want to tell you which ones to pay attention to, especially during this period. And then, you know, when we get the chance, we'll take it into the next level from that point on. All right. So introducing your host, myself, just a bit about myself. I am Jin Dao. Most people call me Jin, so I think a lot of you have said hi, Jin. So I, I recognize the names as well. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. I'm one of the investment analysts here at the Everest Fortune Group, and I'll be sharing with you my views about fundamental analysis. I have you know, previously used to manage a multi-million dollar fund. Um, so these are the same methods or the same analysis that I do when I enter any trades um, on the fund as well. 
with that, let's jump into it. Understanding the economic calendar. So, like I was telling you, you know, there's a lot of things that you have to, or that retail traders consider when they look into the news, and then they get this whole bunch of news. You don't know which ones to focus on, or what to pay attention to, how to use the economic calendar. What I want to do is actually try and um, simplify it a little bit for you, right? Right. So this is something that I've came, I've developed, I've um, put together. There's a whole range of economic data release. Pretty much every hour on a daily basis, uh, well, Monday to Friday, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays, you see a lot of news being released, whether it's for um, the US dollar, the pound dollar, sometimes the Chinese yuan, all across all different um, currency pairs. And what you'll notice is also that you have a lot of a lot of data, a lot of news releases for households. Households are people like yourselves and myself. We're a household, we're retail, and there's a lot of news, a lot of data to be released there. Employment numbers, unemployment numbers, change, claimant counts, uh, retail numbers, all that are household data. Then we have businesses. Businesses, I would say, is the PMI data, the Purchasing Managers Index, and also some other trade details there. So there's businesses, and then banks. Banks giving out some information about building permits, and then the government. Government with their GDP data, so more straightforward, simplest GDP data there, and then the central bank with their interest rate decision, with the um, inflation data, with their rate statements and press conferences. So, you know, put it into the chat. What do you think? Which is going to be more important? Households data with a lot of news being released and quite frequently, or on the other end of the spectrum, the central bank data where there's only a few to be released, not many, and in quite wide intervals. Which do you think would be more important, the household or the central bank data? Martin, straight away with the right answer there, first one best dressed central banks. You are right, right? Um, so no, actually I would say it's the central bank data that's going to be more important because what happens is household data, so there's a lot of data here, lesser on businesses and then banks and then to the government <coughs> and then we get into the central bank. What happens is central banks will actually consider all the data being released through the month or through the two months and then make a decision with their interest rate decision or back then when they were printing money or right now with them tightening policies, they'll make a decision there to change or try and influence what happens again in households, businesses and in banks and even the GDP to work towards the central bank decision again. So look at it as that flow um, where it feeds information to the central banks, right? So yes, most of you have it right. The central bank data will be the more important one compared to the household data. With that, what else to look into? How do I use the news or how do I use uh, the scheduling of the news? You know, think about the timing of the news release. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. Um, I use I have Forex Factory open as my number one or number two um, platform open to give me the information. Right, so I use Forex Factory to tell me two things, or oh, multiple things actually. First one is what time is the news being released? Right, what time is the news being released? Because I want to make sure that before I jump into a trade, there's not going to be a news to be released soon. All right, so for example, if I was looking to enter an Aussie US trade early this morning, and there was a rate decision to be released, I would say, wait, I'm gonna wait for that news release, then I'll jump into the trade, depending on the news release. The worst thing you're gonna do is get into a trade, and then the next moment you realize, oh wait, there was a news release, and it spikes either to the upside or the downside, and totally takes you out right after you enter the trade. <coughs> so the news release, or the timing of the news release, gives you a bit of a plan, right? It helps you plan your trades. It tells you when to get into a trade or when not to get into a trade. Another way I use the Forex Factory 
um, schedule of news is to tell me what news is being released, what is the previous, you can see the previous there, what's the forecasted, and then what was actually released. So this is one of the things that I use all the time, gives me the plan of you know, what's going to happen, what could happen in a good news scenario, in a bad news scenario, where could I see the news being released, right? So I hope that you try and adopt this habit or try and build on this habit, you know, start looking, even if you don't know too much about it at this point, start looking into Forex Factory, have it open there, just, pay, just cast an eye on it as you trade, just so that you can see what happens with the news or when there's a news release or before a news release. So timing of a news release is very important. It helps you to plan your trade. It helps you prevent any crazy shocks to your trade. All right, so far so good. I hope you're getting, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. With that, what's the next thing we look at is a theme, all right? One question I've always received from um, retail traders or people that are trained on how to trade or coached on how to trade is we just go chin tell me which news or which economic data do i need to pay attention to and if i said any particular economic data that's all they focus on i'm actually towards the approach where there is no one fixed data that you should pay attention to because the market is dynamic things change all the time you know your approach should shift a little bit i've been trading since way back in i think even before 2008 i think it was about 2006 thereabouts right and i traded through the financial crisis the global financial crisis in 2008 2009 and at that time what happened during that period was the financial crisis we saw the stock market crash we saw banks closing we saw you know massive upturn in the markets a lot of people lost jobs during that time right and because of that the economic focus or the data that market was focusing on was employment data they were looking to see how quickly were people getting their jobs back how quick how much were they getting paid were they getting paid more or were they getting paid less than before was there wage growth Moving on, you know, through the years, most recently we had the COVID pandemic. Back in 2020 to 2021, what happened during that period? Markets closed down. Economies were shut, you know, for lockdowns. We saw markets close up. We saw demand drop. We saw travel drop. Everything slowed down. And because of that, we saw GDP decreasing. And that time, that one year, all the focus was on was on gdp the gross domestic product we wanted to or the markets were keen to see what's happening are economies recovering right Econo are economies recovering in terms of economic activity so back then in, during the pandemic when we looked at the news we were not so focused on employment data because hey people might have lost jobs or they were working from home they were waiting to see or that led on to the gross domestic product. So the focus one was on the GDP. <coughs> right now, right now in 2022, right? Time has flown by right now in 2022. All the focus is on is whether there is going to be a recession. A recession, not just in the US, but is a pending US recession going to impact the rest of the world are we going to see a global recession? And how is this recession coming around? It's because during the pandemic, during the COVID pandemic, as the governments were trying to stimulate economic activity, trying to boost the GDP, what we saw were they were pumping money into the markets, they were pushing money into the markets, trying to stimulate the GDP or to maintain the GDP. Because of that, inflation started running high. Inflation was growing sky high. Interest rates were very low at back then. And because of interest of low interest rates and high inflation, we saw the threat of a recession because central banks were looking to reduce the inflation or the growth of inflation 
by increasing interest rates. As you increase interest rates, and I'll tell you more about this later as well, as you increase interest rates, inflation slows down, gross domestic product slows down, recession kicks in, right? So you can see here how we are shifting focus, not just on employment data, not just on wage growth. The focus for now is on inflation and interest rates, right? A little bit of GDP, a little bit of employment data, but the focus are on those two main news items. <coughs> With that, you know, I hope you're taking notes. I hope you're, you know, writing down what to pay attention to, right? The current theme of the econo of the economy is at inflation and interest rates. What are news events to watch out for? I pretty much told you the answer already with the theme, but the news events to watch out for, first one, inflation data, CPI data. Whenever you see, and I'll show you later as well on Forex Factory as one of the news article or one of the news platforms, whenever they talk about a release of CPI data, what they're talking about is a release of inflation data, right? Inflation data, it measures the change in price levels over a basket of consumer goods and indicates the change in the cost of leaving. The target, the target for a central bank is for inflation to reach the two to three percent, or for CPI to be at two to three percent. Right now, let me just run a little trial. Let me just see if you guys are paying attention or if you guys are familiar with this. What do you think, or do you know what's the uh, inflation on the US right now? Inflation data for the US right now. Any idea? Inflation data for the US right now. Nine. Good. That's a very good job, my frequent listener. It is 9.1%. Inflation for the US is at 9.1%. Let me try and find my little two. Right? US is at. Um, so, oops, US is at 9.1. Sorry for the scribble. What about the UK inflation? What's the UK inflation at right now? Do you know? The UK inflation. <laughs> it feels like it's 10%. It feels like it's 10%, but it's actually 9.4%. Right. What about for the Australian? We just had the Australian RBA uh, rate decision this morning. What do you think is the Australian inflation data at this point? Not quite, not quite 3%, not like 3.4. Right. It is actually 6.1% for Australia. Okay. Um, last one, well, last, second last one, I promise. What about for the Eurozone? Um, where to get this data from for current inflation? Is this annual in figure or is this for the quarter? Uh, what we're looking at is the annual data. We're looking at annual data there. With You can get this. You can just Google you know, US inflation, UK inflation, or when you keep a track of it, you can look at it from the uh, Forex factory as it's being released. You can see it there as well. All right, Imad, you got it spot on, 8.9%. I recognize Imad, 8.9%. And lucky last, what's the Canadian? <clears throat> what's the Canadian um, inflation data at this point? <clears throat> I'm sorry, there's no prizes at this point. Uh, if you get it right, we'll try and sort something out next time, but let's see, all right? <clears throat> 8.1, EMAT is my star for today, right? Canadian is at 8.1%. So what you see here is that as much as the target CPI is at 2 to 3%, right now, pretty much across major economies, we're looking at 9.1%, Australia at 6.1%, you know, the UK and the Eurozone is at 94 and 8.9%. Very, very high a lot higher than their current targets. So because of that, because of the inflation, because of inflation being so high, what do you think the central banks are doing? Central banks are increasing or cutting interest rates. <coughs> and 
as inflation runs out or inflation growth is increasing, the central banks will be looking to hike interest rates. Right? Why are they hiking interest rates? Why are they increasing interest rates? Is to increase the cost of borrowing. To increase the cost of borrowing. So that instead of businesses borrowing to you know build more machinery to and for instead of people borrowing to buy more houses, the cost of borrowing becomes more. Your mortgage increases, uh, loans increases. When you start thinking about that, what you tend to do is to hold off, to hold off on the expenditure, to wait, which actually causes a slowdown. Right? It causes a slowdown. And because economic activity slows down, what happens is the speed of inflation slows down or reduces. What they what central banks are trying to do is to hike rates so much that everyone slows down or starts thinking of saving first because it might make more sense to put their money in the bank rather than try and invest it or try and do something with it, then <coughs> it slows out inflation. What you should also note here is that inflation is not a switch, right? Inflation growth numbers are not a switch. It's not like I increase rates today, tomorrow inflation drops. It's a bit like tapping on the brakes. It's a bit like tapping on the brakes where you have to keep increasing rates so that slowly inflation will slow down. It will stump growth, right? It will stump growth and exacerbate um, recession, but that is a side effect. What the central banks are looking is that it is one of the, they're taking on as a side effect of reducing inflation growth. Because, hey, if the US inflation, or given that the US inflation is at 9.1%, you don't want to keep growing, you don't want it to keep growing and eventually get to, oh, you know, totals end of the spectrum, let's say it gets to 20%. It makes everything 20% more expensive. That is going to make cost of living astronomical, right? So because of that, they're viewing recession as a possible requirement or a possible side effect to cause or to bring down inflation, just so that inflation growth can slow down, right? So Marzena actually had my thought process there because as inflation <clears throat> or as interest rates grow, increases, you know, slowing down inflation or hopefully slowing down inflation, the GDP, which is measuring the total value of goods and services produced in a country, right? It slows down. GDP for the US came out at a minus 0.9%, you know, second consecutive quarter of a negative GDP signaling a technical recession in the US. And because of that, you know, markets are still considering, or rather the FOMC is still considering further rate increases because inflation is still running high. We haven't seen a clear impact of rate increases bringing down inflation yet, right? So they are looking at it as a possible um, side effect of increasing rates just to target inflation or target a lower inflation. So bear in mind here, the three things that we're paying attention to, or you should be paying extra attention to now is one, scroll back, inflation data. Whenever it's being released, it's gonna have a big impact on the news or on the prices. Second one is interest rate decision, right? Interest rate decision. We know now that markets are considering, <coughs> or cent sorry, central banks now are on the path towards hiking rates, right? Just so that they can slow down inflation growth. With that, let me just do one last quick test. Do you know which, or let me know which central bank is yet to increase interest rates. No, nope, Martin, uh, the ECB did increase interest rates by 50 basis point at the most recent, the first since 2011, I think. Good job. For those of you who said Japan, the Bank of Japan, yep, you are right. The Bank of Japan is the last the only one standing yet to increase interest rates. Um, and it looks like based on the most recent Bank of Japan statement and policy decision that they are not likely to introduce 
a interest rate decision or interest rate hike um, soon or coming for leading up into the near future All right so right now what we're seeing is the divergence between the bank of japan or from the Bank of Japan amongst all the other central banks. Expecting to see that yen weakness, but right now recently what we've seen is some dollar weakness. But if we do see the dollar gain back some strength, we're gonna see that yen weakness come back strongly into play. I'm interested in how the markets price in future rate increases and their possible reactions to different announcements, <clears throat> if higher or lower than expected. Marzena, you are reading my, it looks like you know what I'm be talking about. I will be sharing with you the possible, uh, the scenarios of rate increases being priced in, right? So hang on, sit tight, wait for me. I will show you the example. Um, if interest rates is increased, how does it affect currency? Good question, Sunny. So when interest rates increase, right? Let's just look at Japan with a minus 0.1% interest rate and Australia right now at 1.85%. What happens is that domestically in Australia, people are looking to hold on, save their money, put it into the banks, not look to invest it so much. So because of that, we can see that one is the economic slowdown. Now let's consider that if you're in Japan or people in Japan will be looking and if money flow is easy, you'll be looking at whether they keep their money in Japan at minus, in the Japanese bank at minus 0.1% compared to if they had their money in an Australian bank or in, in Australia earning 1.85%. Which would you put your money towards? Right, Most likely you'll be considering putting your money into an Australian bank to earn that 1.85% rather than to lose 0. minus 0.1% on your deposits. So because of that, if you're gonna put your money into the bank, into an Australian bank, what you would need to do is to change your money to Australian dollars. And if you had to change your money to Australian dollars, that will increase the demand for the Australian dollars, which should, in usual cases, whenever you see a rate increase, is going to push the Australian dollar towards the upside. But what we actually saw today was a little bit of a different scenario and I'll show you that shortly in a couple of slides. All right, good questions there. Thank you everyone for your questions. Please keep it coming. With that, <laughs> how do these key news events affect the market? All right, so bear in mind that as we look into news events, right? So many news events, which ones to pay attention to the theme of the economic data or which the theme of which factor to pay attention to. There are two ways to look into um, news events. Some news events have short-term effects. Some news events have short-term effects. What it means is that it has a short-term change in price. All right, and it depends on the existing trend. Some, for example, the employment change data, retail sales numbers, or purchasing managers index. I won't go through in detail for these, but those news events tend to have a shorter term effect on price. What I mean, what I mean by that is that, let's say, for example, um, let's say the pound dollar has been shooting towards upside recently. PMI data recent release, if it was bad number, it was negative to the pound dollar, what we would normally see or what we would see is a small move towards the downside before a resumption towards the upside. Right? Same as if we saw a you know retail retail sales number. Um, if we saw based on the existing trend, pound dollar moving towards the upside if they had strong retail sales number being released, so we saw retail sales number being strong, what we could see is price shooting towards upside before continuing again, All right? So we're gonna see, and well, price never moves in a straight line, it's in a zigzag, but we're gonna see that reaction or that reaction <coughs> with short-term changes in price, all right? 
employment change numbers. The only exception to this employment change data that would have a short-term effect on price is the NFP, right? The non-farm, non-farm payroll number being released by the US. When does the NFP get released? Do you know? Let me know in the chat. Do you know when does the NFP get released? First Friday. We're heading into it. It is Tuesday today, but we're heading into this Friday is the non-farm payrolls with from the US, right? First Friday of every month. So employment change data usually will have a small impact, but if we see a <coughs> <coughs> non-farm payroll data being released that can have a long-term effect that could have that big effect towards the downside let's say this is the pound dollar if we see a strong us non-farm payroll number you know big employment numbers we could see a big push towards the downside on the pound dollar right so but apart from that everything else would have a short-term effect either to the upside or the downside depending on the trend. On the flip side, apart from the short-term effect, what well, we have are news of that have medium to long-term effects. Medium to long-term effects such as news events will be the GDP, the inflation, and the interest rate decision, right? So why do I say these have long-term effect? It's because the GDP is released monthly, month to month. Right, CPI data, there is the monthly number, right? There is a quarterly number. Sorry, I scribbled terribly. And then what we pay attention to a lot is the yearly number, right? And the interest rate decision coming from the central banks, what they do is they set a target or they set a policy and they don't usually flip-flop on policy. <coughs> what I mean by they don't usually flip-flop on policy is that they're very unlikely to make an interest rate decision as today we're going to increase, to, or next month we're going to decrease, you know, and then the following month we're going to increase again. What usually happens or what typically happens on an interest rate decision is that they will say, we're going to look towards increasing over this period of time, right? To achieve a target rate of, in this case, let's say a 3.25%, I think that was for the US, right? So then they'll start planning into the intervals of how often they're going to increase rates and at how many percent or how many basis point per, in, per rate increase. So what you see here is that these have long lasting effects, medium to long lasting effects, that also has the potential to change or reverse trend. One perfect example I'll show you right after this is for example, the Aussie dollar, right? The Euro, the US dollar, the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar today, we saw it climbing towards upside, news release went straight back down again, right? So there are reasons why an interest rate hike could cause a drop. There are reasons why we could see um, a change in interest rate decision or an implementation of interest rate decision changing or reversing trend, right? So again, let me get into the charts right now just to show you some live examples of how you can actually apply all this. <coughs> Hang on. Show you some examples of interest rates um, of key news events, how you can apply all this onto your charts and also possibly into trading during the news events as well. Uh, one question there is how does interest rate and inflation recession affect gold? What affects gold? Um, well, two main things that affect gold is the relationship between gold and the dollar index, right? So as we see the dollar index dropping, we have seen gold climbing very strongly right and as you know interest rates increases as um, 
inflation continues to climb and interest rates increases further, the risk of a recession increases. Most investors, most traders, most investors like ourselves will be looking at a recession or possible recession and would start thinking, <coughs> if a recession is going to happen, what would you be looking for? You'd be looking for protection against the inflation or protection against the recession. And one of the best or one of the common recession um, alternate or alternative investments in a recession or a hedge against inflation is gold because of that perceived stored value, because of the idea of a tangible stored value <coughs> um, instrument, gold tends to be more attractive or more desired when it comes to a high inflation or a recession risk. So we see gold prices climbing, or we have seen gold prices climbing um, as interest rates increases, as inflation risk increases as the worry for recession continues on. <clears throat> Dennis, um, this is being recorded. I'm sure they will be uploading this. So you are you will be able to watch this again for sure. And I hope you do, you know, catch up all on bits and pieces that you might be missing out on. Is the US stock market negatively correlated to the US index to the dollar index it is actually um so what you actually see is that it's not it's not it's not a hundred percent negatively correlated uh, it's not perfectly negatively correlated but what we usually see is that as the stock market climbs or you see some upside on the stock market um, sometimes or most often we do see a drop in the dollar index right however um, that's not always the case because sometimes we do see <coughs> if we do see a big drop in the dollar index right one scenario that i have traded over several times before is a big drop in the dollar index could cause or could cause a big jump in the stock market but that could eventually cause the dollar index to jump again why so is because as the dollar index drops it makes buying into a stock market, into the US stock market cheaper, a little bit of a discount because the dollar becomes weaker. But as everyone changes money to buy into the stock market, that increases demand for the dollar. And that's why we see the dollar jump back up again. So it's not perfectly negatively or 100% negatively correlated, but there is some level of a correlation between the US stock market and the dollar index. Is it possible to predict correlations as there's always a divergence? Um, it is possible to predict some correlations or rather correlations are usually already quite common or quite set up. Um, but bear in mind that when you look into correlations, there are some, there could be some lag, right? So you could see, for example, um, actually I'll show you that example right now. So let me just quit out of this. <coughs> Give me a second, and then as we do that, all right. So let me just show you an example where um, okay, gold, right? And this is a previous analysis I did. I was quite happy with that. It shot up. Let me just clear it out. So gold, what? Well, I'll show you here is that gold was dropping quite strongly, right? Between the, yeah, let's say on the 5th of July, we saw gold dropping towards the downside. <coughs> but what you should also notice is that the dollar index on the 5th of July was pushing towards the upside, right? So you can see that as the dollar pushed towards the upside, what happened on gold? Let me just try to flip this. Um, let me just load that up. Hmm. Why doesn't it load my charts? <coughs> 
Okay, let me just remove all of that. Okay, so you can see that on the 5th of July, put in it there. Right, you can see that as the dollar shot up, we can see that gold went down. So that's when you can see that it was quite well correlated. Um, dollar strengthened, but gold shot down. But what you should also notice here is that on the 14th of July, as gold, as the dollar started to drop, actually this doesn't prove my example. Okay, here we go. Uh, 14th of July, you can see that as gold, as dollar started to drop, we still saw some downside towards gold before that push up. All right. So actually, I remember what I wanted to share with you now is that the there is a bit of a lag. So there's a bit of lag when there's a correl in terms of correlation. For example, here between the dollar index and gold, we can see that drop start already. But in this case, we still saw gold dropping before pushing up. So what I'm trying to tell you is try to avoid looking into the dollar index saying, all right, it's dropping, time to buy gold. Because if you did buy gold at that point, you see quite a bit of a heartache before finally pushing towards the upside. <coughs> is it the same chart? No, it's not the same chart. That's dollar index and that's gold on the side. All right. Um, so, Right, okay, so with that, what I want to show you as well is this. Where is it? Um, the Aussie dollar. I'll, I'll go back to one chart. It's a bit neater there. So the Aussie dollar, right? I'm super happy with that analysis. I was looking for it to push towards the upside, but let's clear that out. What we saw here, and I'll show it to you on the H1 time frame with the forex factory news today right so at 12 30 p.m gmt plus eight we saw the aussie rba increase rates from a 1.35 percent by 50 basis point to a 1.8 percent this was an increase a third consecutive increase they did it once in june 50 basis points they did it again in july and now they've done it again in <coughs> August. Aussie interest rate increase or uh, Aussie interest rates decision is the first Tuesday of every month. And in this case, they increase rates. But why? But why did the Aussie dollar drop? Pretty much straight away, once they increase, once they announced the rate increase, you saw the Aussie dollar drop strongly towards the downside. Two reasons why this happened was because this rate increase had been signaled for a very long time. Yes, that's right, uh, Imad, you got it. Because it was as expected, right? It was as expected, um, not because, not just because it was as expected, it's been expecting, or markets have been expecting this decision for a long time, probably since the last rate decision. <clears throat> so since July 5th, right after that, the market's already pricing in the likelihood of another 50 basis point increase. So. You can see that since July, where was it? Since July, the 5th of July, we saw the rate increase causing that drop. And then we saw that push towards the upside as it started pricing in the likelihood of further rate increases from the RBA. So that's one reason why we saw the, do the Aussie dollar drop so strongly. It's a buy the rumor, sell the fact scenario. And then secondly is as well, is because, hey, they've increased rates to a 1.85% right now. What this means is that we're likely to see, you know, more or slower economic activity in Australia. We're going to see a downturn in, a possible downturn in housing as well. That recessionary fear, that recessionary fear, applying that downward pressure on the Aussie dollar towards the downside. So that's why we saw this push <clears throat> once they released um, as expected, priced in and further worry or recession worry for the Aussie dollar towards the downside. Okay, so that's one example. 
Before I get into the next example, what I want to show you here as well is, I'm pretty sure most of you are already <coughs> on the <coughs> VIP room, the IC Markets VIP room. If you're not already on, what I'll do is I will put in the link, I'll copy in the link. <coughs> I'm pretty sure I should, let me just put in this whole link. All right, just make sure you joined. Oh, I can't put in. All right, so um, find a way to put in a link later. Okay, I'll find a way to put in a link later. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you join onto the VIP room because what we can do is take this discussion or take this analysis or this session, this webinar session, onto the VIP room where I can share with you more trade ideas. I can share with you um, further expectations on what I'm looking at. In this case, you know, I just posted up just then before this session my view and analysis on the Aussie dollar and how to push on why it's dropping, what to look out for next, which key support levels to pay attention to. All right. So you haven't already, please make sure you jump onto the IC Markets VIP room. With that, let me just try and find out how to get the link out to you guys. Give me one second. All right, so with that, what I want to show you next is that what news do we have coming up? All right, so tomorrow, not tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow here, let me just set the time to Singapore time. So this is why I use Forex Factory. I can just plan it according to how I need it. And you can see that we have the Swiss franc with their CPI data month on month. We're looking at a 0.5% going to a minus 0.1, so a small change in the CPI. I'm not so keen on the month-to-month -month number. Uh, what are the long-term effects which affect the market? Long-term events. So, Martin, long-term events that affects or events that affect the market in the long term will be <coughs> especially the interest rates decision, um, the central bank's plan or press conference and rate statements and the inflation data all right is it advisable to look at the cotr you can um, it really depends on your or the way you trade because you could be looking at you know if you're looking at shorter term or shorter to medium term then cotr might not be the best at that point so it really depends on how you approach the markets what kind of trading style you're more familiar with or more comfortable with All right but what i want to share with you is and i want you know your input here on thursday 4th of august thursday 4th of august at 7 p.m gmt plus eight we do have the bank of england with a possible or highly anticipated rate increase with the official bank rate looking to go from a 1.25 to a 1.75%, 50 basis point rate increase to come from the Bank of England on Thursday. What do you think is going to happen to the pound dollar? Could be a trick question. What do you think is going to happen to the pound dollar <clears throat> if on Thursday, 4th of August, 7 p.m., we see news being released at 1.75%? Since it's expected, so like Aussie could go down, possible. Who else? <clears throat> Pound dollar would drop. It's already dropped today. So what else do we think? No effect if it's expected. Nothing because of risk. See, okay, good stuff. Well done, everyone. Okay, so I like I like how the pound dollar has been moving so far. We've seen that push towards the upside over the last couple of days, last couple of weeks, right? I'm very interested to see that it's hit that 1.2285 level <clears throat> and reverse towards the downside. 
<coughs> right now it's hit that 1.2186 level and bounced and then set now sitting at that 1.22 level okay so my view is that if we see it trade within this range because thursday is only tuesday now there's still a couple of days before thursday comes around right there's still a couple of days if we see the pound dollar sit within this range what i'll be looking for is you know if it shoots up right if it shoots up if they do a 50 basis point increase and we see price shoot towards the upside from that 1.2284 level we could see further upside but what i'm actually expecting is something similar to the aussie dollar right to something similar to what happened on the aussie dollar i think that for the next couple of days we could see the pound dollar slowly climb towards that 1.2285 level and then a possible downside move in that case something like that you know a rejection of that resistance level towards the downside i'll be looking at a possible trade about 80 pips on a take profit 30 pips on a stop loss a one is to 2.26 risk reward ratio towards the downside on the aussie dollar um, as it rejects that level and also like cello says a double top because it's hit the top hits and rejects a double top at a resistance level good strong move that'd be the first move towards the downside and if price breaks below that 1.2190 level we could again see further downside towards the next support of about 1.2075 but bear in mind i'm being a little bit cautious here or what i want you to be extra cautious is because you can see here as i zoom out the pound dollar has been climbing very strongly since the 14th of july towards the upside very strongly it is a very strong uptrend so i wouldn't take selling into it lightly right it's a big counter trend trade but as i was sharing with you um in one of the slides just then interest rates decision could have that impact of reversing trend next thing to pay attention to as well is the rate statement right the policy report and the summary because they could say hey we've done in, we've done a 50 basis point rate increase and you can see is that the bank of england was actually one of the first few who have started increasing rates right if i'm not wrong they increased rates earlier than everyone else back in december <clears throat> From a 0.1% to a 0.25, from 25 to 50, 50 to 75. They've done 25 basis points over one, two, three, four meetings already. On the fifth meeting coming up, looks like they might be doing a 50, but they could, right? They could say that 50 is the limit. They're not looking at doing more than that moving forward. And if they do say that, that could be viewed as a dovish hike. It's saying that, hey, I'm increasing rates, but I'm not looking to do it further. Moving on, we're gonna to wait to see what happens. And we could actually see quite significant downside on the pound dollar again. If it, that's the first trade I would look at, second one will be about 40 towards a, down, towards a stop loss, about 80 towards a take profit, if it breaks that 1.2180 1 um, level so i could break this up towards the downside let's see if we see a, hot, a dovish hike from the bank of england <clears throat> on the flip side look at the bank of england's rate decision if they do say hey we've done a 50 basis point increase if it's not enough in the next meeting we're looking at another 50 basis points then we could see quite a hawkish move towards upside look for it to break above that 1.2285 level of upside in this case i'll go out to the h4 time frame and find a resistance um i'll put in that key point there as a possible 
target. And that's quite a big upside. There's a 150 pip move towards the upside um, on the pound dollar. I think that we could be a little bit conservative and say at that point as well. So we could break it up into two trades, 60 pip move towards the upside on the pound dollar. Why would pound go up? Why would pound dollar go up if they're hawkish and hinting further rate hikes? Hey, good question, Zaba. Very simply, it's that if let's say the central banks release a statement saying that they have increased rates and they're looking to increase rates further. That's going to be hawkish because what happens is markets will be starting to price in further rate increases. They'll be looking to price in further rate increases because the higher interest rates from the UK, right, right now at 1.75 or expected to be 1.75, if they increase it by another 15, the next meeting is going to hit towards 2.25 um, level. Could be quite a hawkish move because the pound or the interest rates from the UK becomes high, right? Becomes more in demand. And that's why we would see it as a bit of a hawkish move if they do hint for further rate increases. All right, good questions. No worries. <clears throat> If rate increase, if interest rates are same as expected, then what's the impact on this? <coughs> if interest rates are as expected, then look towards look towards the policy statement, right? To see if there's any hints on further rate increases, or more simply, is look at the chart, uh, look at the news. One, if the rate increases as expected, then look into the charts to tell you where it's going. Right. I know that for a lot of you, you know, reading the policy statement might not be something that you'll be super keen on. And then you'll be see you'll be seeing price move while you're reading that statement. You get super emotional on jumping into a trade. I would say look into the charts. If price is, you know, if the interest rates increase comes out at 1.75% and you see a pound dollar shooting towards the downside, then you could be looking to, you know, shortcut the analysis into looking thinking that it's going to push lower towards the next support level so for me how i approach the markets i don't just look at the news alone i look at the news i look at the trend and the support levels or support and resistance levels to decide whether to buy or to sell or to do nothing it could come to the point where you know we see that um the Pound or the Bank of England might have increased interest rates. It might be very hawkish, saying that it'd be further rate increases into the future, but then yet we see the pound dollar shoot towards the downside. In that case, what would you do? Would you buy or would you sell or would you do nothing? I'll repeat that. If we're, say for example, we're at this point with the rate increase, 1.75%, we see price shooting down despite the bank of england saying you know we're looking at further rate increases or we're looking to continue this aggressive approach and increase rates further all right so good a couple of you said do nothing i know i know that you're saying do nothing now i hope you really do do nothing i would say yes oh great fantastic answer there pinesh i'll i'll wait for it to drop if we if i see price dropping i'll wait for it to drop I'll wait for it to bounce before I'll look to buy. So I'll look for the fundamentals likely to be pushing towards upside. I'll look for the technicals to align with my fundamental direction before I look into getting onto a trade. So in this case, if it's dropping and I'm expecting it to go up, I'll do nothing. I'll wait to buy when it hits a support level to bounce up. Or if it doesn't, then I'll totally sit out and I'll wait for the next news events or something else to happen. <clears throat> With that, again, let me just try again. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to. All right, so if you haven't already, make sure you join. I can't seem to put this into the questions and answers okay um, any correlation in gold and stock market as in p500 dow jones index 
Um, there is some correlation. Again, there is some correlation, but not, not something that I would keenly highlight, right? Not something I would keenly highlight just because we there are a lot of factors, a lot of other factors that will affect um, the S&P, you know, earnings release, uh, sudden shocks to the markets, too many factors that could push the S&P that does not affect gold too directly as well. So there will be shocks and spikes on the stock market compared to gold. I think if you consider gold and the dollar index, that correlation would be stronger uh, rather than the S&P and the Dow Jones index. All right. So with that, um, may please put it in the chat. How did you find this? session any suggestions any feedback i'll be happy to take it on board <clears throat> if it's helpful please let me know as well um, one last question was how do you reduce the spikes once the news are read before the market goes to the right direction i would say you know good question is do not try to be the first one in to the markets do not be the first do not try to be the first one entering into a trade right after the news because you'll most likely not be the first one to be able to jump in all right you'll be the um you'll be a bit late and you most likely catch a retracement at that point so um, just be extra careful there watch let's see what happens before you jump into it and one last one i would say is that try to avoid um if you're not really familiar with the news you know uh, someone did say there is you know stick to technicals i'll say yeah if you know if you're not really familiar with the news then try not to trade during the news trade after the news okay give me one second i'm going to try and um put it into the chat for you okay i'll just pump it into the chat can you see that it's in the chat there great great super All right so if you have any questions put it into the vip room i know a lot of you are in there already i look forward to catching up with you all in there if you have any questions please feel free to tag me and let me know Good stuff. So thank you all again. I hope you had a good session. Uh, we'll catch up again. Take care now. Trade well, trade safe, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye now. All right.